Hello friends, this is Promi, and welcome back to the Kerbal Commonwealth Space Agency. Firebug and Firefly are approaching Duna, as we saw at the end of the last episode. I was about to make a maneuver node to bring our periapsis to the other side of the planet in order to uh, go in the correct direction for this contract here, but I was just reviewing that contract in question, and that is position satellite in stationary orbit of Duna, and uh, we don't have a resource survey scanner on here, which is a bit of a problem, so I guess we'll have to forget about that contract for now. And our other contracts for the probe, um, uh, that one's for Jewel, we go up higher, there's a magnetic field survey around Ike and field survey around Duna and uh, the direction of the orbit doesn't matter for those. Um, we will need to put ourselves in a 32 degree inclination. So let's check with Ike. Uh, okay, that was the jewel one. I think I skipped it. Up Ike, 48 degree inclination. Okay. Um, so I don't know if we'll have enough fuel to do the Ike one, but we're going to do the Duna one. Uh, I'll put ourselves in a 48, at least a 48 degree inclination, just in case we can do the Ike one. Um, although I guess it doesn't actually matter that much because we'll have to transfer between bodies anyway, and uh, can change our inclination then. Um, so let's see about changing our inclination here. So add a maneuver. And let's see. Let's come around the bottom. That's the top of Duna's atmosphere. 40? Okay, that looks pretty good. So we're going to come in like that. And then uh, we'll burn for capture. So let's set up a second node. Pull it back, and that is captured. And we can decide what to do from there. Okay, so... Oh, uh... We do have one thing that's shown up in our messages here, and that is not related to this mission. It's uh, the survey around uh, the long-term magnetic field survey around Minmus has completed. Uh, I believe that was the pin cushion that was doing that. So that got us 11, 12 science and what 25,000 funds. So that's nice. Now we'll just skip forward to our maneuver node. So first let's get our craft oriented in the correct direction and we will time warp forward. Okay, we're just about here. So let's get this burn done. So get the last little bit. Oh, there we go. Alright, so next node is in two days, one hour. And we got another message here. Um, we have initiated the first flyby of Duna. A bit of funds and science for that. I believe we should now be in high space above Duna. Still quite far away, but should be some new data to gather while we are orienting ourselves. So let's see, uh, actually let's go through science here now, which is where I do not have a button for it. That's waypoint manager. Um, I don't seem to have a button for X science. That's strange. Alright, well let's do this the old-fashioned way. 
So, pressure data. We are in vacuum, so nothing too interesting here. Let's transmit and see how much power that takes. Okay, that wasn't a huge amount of data, so that didn't take too much. Looks like our connection strength is uh, quite good. No, wait a minute. Oh, it looks like we're uh, bouncing our signal through the steel breeze on its way to Dres. I guess it does have uh, quite a lot of antennas on it. Um, so let's take plasma wave data. A small bow shock is detected on the solar side of Duna, caused by the interaction of the solar wind with Duna's weak magnetic field. Uh, interesting, so Duna does have something of a magnetic field. Okay, transmit that. So that's gone through, and I think that lighting up because that satisfied part of our survey contract. Um, now we will log the magnetometer boom data. Very weak magnetic field indicates that Duna's core solidified long ago, allowing its atmosphere to be largely stripped away and blasting the surface with intense solar radiation. All right, let's transmit that one. And what else do we have here? Temperature, shouldn't be too much interesting here. Um, yeah, just typical readings for vacuum. Transmit that one. Gravity data. Did that transmit? Yeah, I guess it did. Okay. Gravity data. Uh, the sensor passes over the modeled surface of Duna. Gravity appears lowest in the massive canyon that stretches across the surface. Uh, well, that's interesting. We can detect that from so far away. I won't question it. Let's transmit. Actually, I'm going to time warp forward a little bit just to make sure our electric charge is at max because I believe the gravity data is quite large, so will be a bit of a stress on our electrical system. So let's watch it go down. And, yep, that took most of our charge. So I'm just going to time warp again to fill it back up. There we go. Uh, what else do we have on here? So a uh, magnetometer, radio plasma wave. Um, can we see anything with our... Um, our imager platform should probably point it towards Duna at least not that it actually matters in terms of game mechanics but let's log the imaging data uh, visible and IR images of Duna reveal a planet covered in iron oxides giving it a rusty red hue hmm now this has some other the imaging platform seems to have some other functions. I wonder if it counts as a resource scanner? No, probably not, because it would have shown checked on my um, contract panel, and it did not. Alright, uh, so we did everything else. We have a mystery. We've got a couple of mystery goos. Might as well use one of them now. Uh, the goose seems unchanged from interplanetary space. And I have no way to reset them, so might as well just transmit right away. Okay, and with that, I think uh, we did everything that we can out high above Duna. Just realign with our maneuver node and time warp forward the two days remaining. Okay, we're coming up on our maneuver node, another seven minutes to go. Got quite a nice view of 
the rim of Duna's atmosphere. Ike is over there, quite dark. I think that might be Kerbin, maybe? And I thought I saw Jewel in the background, too. I think Dune is obscuring it right now. But okay, let's uh, time warp the last few minutes. Oh, camera's rotating. Coming over the polar cap. The sun peeking over the edge. Okay, burning. A little sensitive. Don't think the craft is perfectly balanced either. But I think good enough is good enough. Oh, and there goes our engine. So let's decouple our transfer stage. Is that going to... So that'll stay in a very elliptical orbit of Duna. That's okay, it shouldn't cause us any problems. So let's start up this engine. Got a little bit left. Uh, this engine's quite a bit weaker. It's just a tiny little ant engine. Okay, good enough. I feel like this uh, far side of Duna here should be totally black, but Sort of like if I adjust the brightness so that it's totally dark, the uh, everything else is impossible to see. Not sure what this dark region is. It looks kind of like a like a lake, but I know there's no liquid on Duna. Um, so let's take a look here. Uh, so our probe is bracketed. I think that might mean that we are in appropriate location for our uh, magnetic field survey. We've got some more things here. Parameter complete. Um, okay, the magnetometer scan at high orbit from two days ago. And the radio plasma wave as well. And uh, gathered scientific data from Duna and entered an orbit around Duna. Getting lots of world firsts. Yeah, so let's look at our contracts. So we need uh, those two experiments from low orbit. And then we need to maintain this orbit for 75 days. Um, okay, Ooh, look at that, that's quite pretty. This light area of ice or something? Huh, interesting. Alright, well, let's do our experiments. A log radio plasma wave. Consistent recordings are made of so called lightning. Uh, of so called lightning whistler radio wave patterns, despite the lack of lightning or other forms of geomagnetic events on Duna. Hmm, a mystery. Okay, we'll transmit that back to home. Let's make sure we keep an eye on our electric charge. Looks like we got uh, another yep, parameter complete for that. Let's do the other half with the magnetometer boom. Isolated patches of Duna's atmosphere appear to be protected by small magnetospheres. Uh, so I wonder if that's um, localized uh, molten interior, even if most of it is solidified. Might be good to know where those are for potential future colonization efforts. We'll transmit that back. Let's get some... We can probably do everything besides the gravity in one go. So we'll log the temperature. Uh, what measurable gases exist up here are not nearly as warm as in low Kerbin orbit. Right, so the tenuous traces of atmosphere. Let's do a pressure scan. Barometer, uh, barometer detects the tiniest hint of an atmosphere up here, which is consistent with our temperature reading. Um, let's do another mystery goo. 
Riku has very slightly changed color, indicating that Duna has a faint radiation belt. And that too is consistent with our magnetic findings. Keep that. And let's blast all that data through our main dish. Uh, transmit all. Okay, cycling through the various uh, experiments. Is that everything? I guess so. Um, how long is this orbit going to take? So, okay, so the orbit is about three days. I think on uh, once we go around and our next next periapsis, I will detach our lander. Um, oh yes, the gravity data. Last part of this low orbit research. And uh, yeah, that's the same reading we got from high space. Let's just time warp forward so we can transmit with full power. Clear our parameter complete messages here. Okay. So we're going to do a full orbit of Duna, and then once we're back at our periapsis, I will detach our lander. Let's just watch Duna as it sails past. Getting a little artifacting there with the scatterer mod, but it's alright. Some hazy clouds above Duna, sort of uh, pinkish, so... Probably some of that is dust. Alright, our periapsis is in nine minutes now. So let's point uh, retrograde. Help the Probe slow, slow down a bit. Time warp forward until we're at our periapsis. Or maybe just before. Spike coming up from behind Duna. Yeah, see, now that the sun is behind Duna, everything's brightened up quite a bit, which is, uh. I don't think that realistic, but. Oh well. And pretend that it's the infrared cameras on our probe that are seeing it. Okay, we'll point retrograde once more and detach our little probe. So the Firefly will go on to continue its survey of Duna's magnetic field. Start up the engine on this. Not a whole lot of uh, fuel in here, but we don't weigh a whole lot. Um, so let's keep an eye on our fuel. I think we should be fine. So let's go full blast. Want to probably come down uh, on the light side. Biome doesn't really matter too much. They're all equally interesting to us at this point. We don't have uh, much in the way of heat shielding on here, or really any. Uh, so when we're about to enter the atmosphere, I want to use up the remainder of my rocket fuel to slow our descent as much as possible. Dutna's atmosphere may be thin, but you're going fast enough. It still, uh, still puts up quite a wall of resistance. Okay, this is taking somewhat more fuel than I thought it would. Okay, let's watch our periapsis go around. Okay, so there's the atmosphere. 
projecting us to land just south of the North Polar Cap. And we got a world first for suborbital spaceflight of Abduna. Mm. Once we hit the atmosphere, you may want to uh, start sampling some of our experiments. I think I'm going to turn off SAS for now because the sun's not hitting our solar panels. Let's time warp forward a bit. Okay, we've hit the atmosphere. I just want to try to orient our craft so that we're getting some sun at least. But it's not looking very good for that. Uh, let's just slow down our orbit as much as possible at this point. Okay, we're looking pretty good. We have another milestone. Entered into atmospheric flight above Duna. Almost out of fuel. I think our orbit is looking fairly safe. We can rotate this to get a bit of sun. Okay, and we're out of fuel. Um, so let's start sampling some experiments. Let's observe the mystery goo. Uh, okay, nothing really to report from up here. Keep that. Save everything to transmit once we're on the ground. So I don't want to uh, deplete our electric charge when we have to be able to control our probe up here. Let's log the pressure data. And nothing too specific. Probably pretty faint still. We'll keep that. And temperature. Okay. Looks like we're getting a tiny bit of flow into our panel, but not much. Let's time up forward a bit. Oh, I'm seeing some sort of... What is that, a stream of dust? Something like that. Looks like a dust storm going through the valley. It's interesting. So our speed is decreasing fairly rapidly. Should be able to open the parachute soon. So we're below 350, okay. Too high. What? Try again. There it goes, okay. Whew, I was a little worried there for a moment. Okay, that should slow us right down. Let's turn off SAS. We can extend our landing legs. All right, we're seven kilometers up. Looks like we're going to land on a reasonably flat piece of reddish terrain, similar to the majority of the planet. Whereabouts are we? Okay, so we're actually quite a bit closer to the equator than I thought we were going to be. Okay, coming up on a, another historic moment here. First Kerbal artifact to land on another proper planet. Well, it was a bit of a hard landing, but we are on the surface of Duna.
firebug performed its task well. Looks like we're on a bit of a slope here. You can see various scattered boulders. You can see some sort of planet up there. The atmosphere has a golden hue. You see Ike anywhere? Oh yes, there's Ike. So I guess if, since Ike is in a synchronous orbit, we will see it continuously from here. It's also, I think that's Jewel there. So we've got a nice view of the sky. And we can start with our surface observations. Let's uh, actually begin by sending what we have learned back home. Transmit all. And that should be bounced through. Stacked a coupler mini. Why stacked a coupler mini? Oh, I wonder if that's what the uh, the firefly got renamed to when we decoupled it. Uh, we'll have to check on that to fix its name. Okay, let's. Uh, Time warp to charge up our solar panels. Oh, sun's going away. Okay, we're charged up now though. So let's take gravity readings. Sensor performs a detailed and calibrated sweep of the local gravity of Duna. And transmit. Looks like we got another message here. Landed on the surface of Duna. Good stuff. Uh, get this out of the way. Still uploading? Yes. Okay, now I guess uh, any further transmissions are going to have to wait through the night. Um, well, let's see what we can get. How much power we can get before the sun goes all the way down. Okay, sun is down. Just got a little blue haze. Oh, that's kind of nice. I like the colors. Um, we have a reasonable amount of electric charge now. So, log pressure data. The atmosphere is pretty thin, even at the surface. It may be enough for a very light aircraft to generate lift, however. That quite potentially be a future mission. I'd like to send an electrically powered aircraft to Duna. Let's get some uh, temperature readings. It's very cold here, but the atmosphere provides some degree of insulation compared to an airless world. Okay. Uh, let's transmit those two and see what we have left. Okay, transmitting the second one. Can we get seismic data? There does not appear to be much seismic activity on the planet. Its geological activity is minimal. That is consistent with the uh, spotty magnetic readings that we obtained. Let's transmit that one. I think that will be the last one for the day. Actually, I think that will not actually complete. Okay, and our probe is uh, dormant for the time being. So now we will wait through the night for the sun to return. Alright, the sun is back and we seem to be in the middle of some sort of dust storm. Looks like we're not actually charging yet because the sun is still behind that hill. So let's time warp forward a little bit more. Come on, sun, we miss you. Here it comes. All right, charging up our batteries. A little bit faster. 
It's doing his uh, rotational period. Seems slower than Kerbin. Alright, well let's transmit that seismic data we had. The seismic data also seems pretty hefty comparable to the, the gravity data. So let's time warp again. Get our batteries charged up. Take some mystery goo readings. Fine reddish dust sticks to the surface of the goo. Alright, transmit. The mystery goo takes very little charge. Um, still have our laser uh, laser light imager to do. So I'll collect the laser data. What do we get? Significant concentration. Uh, significant concentrations of iron oxide are detected in Duna's surface. The presence of which is responsible for the planet's red coloring. All right. I think uh, more or less what we assumed from back on Kerbin. Transmit that, we'll see how much data that, or electric charge that one takes. A moderate amount, I would say. Uh, we did gravity already, right? Yes. Alright, laser gravity, uh, pressure. I think that's it for our probe. So we'll remain here and monitor the conditions on Duna. Let's go back to Firefly, which is up at Periapsis now. See what it can do. Probably can do scans over a number of different biomes. Like, uh, let's take gravity for example. So this is Duna's Midlands. The similar reading we had before, but we can transmit this for some additional science. Full electric charge, so we'll go ahead and do that. Wait, what? That took all of our electric charge. Hmm. We were at full before, weren't we? What's going on here? Let's try that again. Review. Transmit. Huh. Well, it looks like we can't actually transmit it all. Why not? We could transmit data from the uh, gravity data from the firebug through the firefly, but gravity data taken by the firefly is now too large. Well, I guess before we had the firebug attached and had access to its batteries. Um, I wonder if it has to do with our signal strength. Uh, maybe if we upgraded. KSC's uh, antenna relay. Hmm. Well, I will have to come back to that once I've figured out what exactly we can do. Um, okay, so 69 more days of um, magnetic field study. We still have a lot of fuel, so very possible that after this field study is done, we can head over to Ike, doing do a field study there. Uh, let's see if any of the other instruments have anything to give us. No, it doesn't look like it. Uh, I think the others are all not biome specific. So I think that's all for the 
Duna mission for now. So I'm going to head back to the Space Center and see what we have as far as science goes. Our staff and crew have once again rolled out the Jumbotron onto the lawn outside of Mission Control, eagerly awaiting the first images back from the Firebug. Just starting to receive the signal now. It's like from our landing cam, we can see the leg of the lander and its shadow. And a lovely panorama of Duna's surface. Very exciting day here at the Space Center. Alright, the new day is just about to break. Sun's just over the horizon. Crew is either getting back to work or getting some rest after a very early morning or late night, respectively. And we are at 425 science now and 2.7 million funds. It's a pretty healthy amount of funds, so I think it might be time to uh, upgrade one of our facilities to polish off the episode. So I think we're going to upgrade our tracking station. We'll increase our antenna power and enable the tracking of unknown objects. So there, now we have our fully upgraded tracking station and with the new huge dishes that creates uh, new environments underneath them. So there's new things available at our Kerbin Environmental Institute through our experiment mast. So let's grab all that stuff. And now we're at 475. Getting pretty close to uh, one of the big science nodes. Cost 550. I think we are going to wait for one of the ones that unlocks additional experiments. Those are always good to have. And uh, the sun's just coming over the horizon. I think going to call this the end of the episode. So until next time, this has been Promi. Thanks for watching.